Welcome to section 8.1 on the square root property and completing the square. This is one of the other methods that we could have to help us solve quadratic equations that are not exactly factorable, or to put it more nicely, that's not easy to factor. So the square root property, this is if we let u be an algebraic expression and d be some, some non-zero number. If u squared is equal to d, then u is equal to the positive square root of d, or u is equal to the negative square root of d. We could write that in shorthand as u is equal to positive and negative square root of d. So in terms of our example down here, I have x squared is equal to 9. So if we were to take the square root of both sides, we would get x is equal to positive and negative square root of 9, which is 3. So to give a couple more examples, <clears throat> I have x, 2x squared is equal to 72. We could first divide by this 2 and have x squared is equal to 36. And then take the square root of both sides. We would get x is equal to positive and negative 6. And then for 16x squared is equal to 9, we could divide by 16. So x squared is equal to 9 over 16. When we take the square root of both sides of this, we get x is equal to positive and negative. This would be the square root of 9 over 16. Gives actually a nice fraction. This would be. 3 over 4. So positive and negative 3 fourths. Some of these, though, require rationalizing the denominator, such as this one. 2x squared minus 7 is equal to 0. We've got 7 to both sides. So 2x squared is equal to 7. We divide by 2. And we would get x squared is equal to 7 over 2. So now when we take the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to positive and negative square root of 7 over 2. But it's not entirely um, written in a nice simplified form. We could rewrite the square root of 7 over 2 as positive and negative square root of 7 divided by the square root of 2. So rationalizing the denominator is basically just multiplying that fraction by 1, um, which in this case is going to be whatever is in the denominator, square root of 2. And we're going to multiply that to both the numerator and the denominator. So this fraction is essentially one, just uh, written in a different format. Doing this, we will get the square root of 14 in the numerator divided by two times the square root of, the square root of two times the square root of two makes two. So positive and negative, square root of 14 divided by two would be our answer for this particular problem. Other times, when we have the square root, we could simplify it, which is the process of factoring out a perfect square from the square root. So I have here x squared minus 18 is equal to 0. We could add 18 to both sides. And this makes x squared is equal to 18. Then when we take the square root of both sides, right, 18 is not a perfect square. So x would just be the positive and negative square root of 18. But 18, though, we can factor out a perfect square. Right? Since for us to get 18, 
The biggest perfect square that divides evenly into it is the number nine times two. So we could rewrite this positive and negative square root of 18 as positive and negative square root of nine times two. And that gives us very nicely, since the square root of nine is three, this would be positive and negative three times the square root of two. And that's the solution we would get for X for this particular problem. Now for these, we want to solve these with the square root property. Uh, three times X plus five squared is equal to 36. We could divide by three from both sides. X plus five squared is equal to 12. So now when we take the square root of both sides, we get X plus five is equal to positive and negative square root of 12. Uh, 12 though, that could break up. Biggest perfect square that goes evenly into 12 is the number four times three. So this is the same thing as X plus five is equal to, this would be positive and negative two times the square root of three. And now we just subtract the five over. Of course, because of this having a square root in it, it's a decimal, but we can write it as X is equal to negative five plus or minus the square, uh, two times the square root of three. And then for X squared minus six X plus nine is equal to 81. We could quickly factor um, the left-hand side as with this is a perfect square trinomial. X minus three squared is equal to 81. And now take the square root of both sides. X minus three is equal to positive and negative nine. So adding three to both sides gives us X is equal to three plus or minus nine. So the two solutions that we would get for this, if we subtract these, we would get a value of negative six. If we were to add them, we get a value of 12. Um, that's part one of this um, square root property. And uh, be on the lookout for part two on that completing the square. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you.